I mean, we were... No. All right. Yep. I'm going to call the meeting to order. City manager, please call the roll. Mayor Pro Tem Wilcox. Present. Mayor Brown. Present. Council Member Sweet. Present. Council Member Tucson. Present. Council Member Simmons. Here. Council Member McLean. Here. Council Member King. Present. It's all present. There is a quorum. Please stand as you're able for the Pledge of Allegiance and a moment of silence. Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice. On contained motion for agenda approval. So moved. Support. Been moved and supported. Any updates to the agenda? Yes. I'd like to add a discussion about um, possibly thinking about other candidates, given the fact that we've had two drop out. Um, so this would be after, after the interview? Yeah. Um, there's also, I can't, um, an update to the resolution that we passed on Tuesday that needs to just be reread and voted upon to change the signature from the deputy clerk to the city, to the city manager um, for the sale of the easement. So as we put that back in. However, council on. Discussion first and do this. After. Yeah, we can do that. All right. I'm sorry, so that's added first? No, it's gonna go after the discussion. Oh, okay, great, thank you. All right, I'm just going to give it to you, Evan, since you're right here. Thank you. All right, all in favor of the agenda as amended, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, this is our first opportunity for public comment. Um, it, We'll start with if there's anyone signed up. I, maybe. I don't think so. Mm -hmm. Um, Is there anyone in the audience who would like to make comment? No. What about anyone on Zoom? If anyone on Zoom would like to make comment, please raise your hand. You'll have three minutes to address council. No hands are raised, council. Is there anybody on Zoom? Oh. All right, seeing none, I'll close public comment and we'll move into our city clerk interviews. The first person that we'll have before us is Lori Thomas. Good evening. Um, so the process will just go, the uh, council will go around the table, kind of round robin, asking questions. Um, the interview will last for about 45-ish minutes. Um, we'll end by asking if you have any questions for us, uh, and then we'll just kind of go from there. So we'll start with, if you can kind of just give us, um, an introduction and then we'll start, I guess I'll start down here and ask the first question after we get done about one minute introduction, maybe. Mm-hmm. ECA Eastern. My daughter got her master's from Eastern. My son is works for Washtenaw County as the maintenance technician for the homeless shelter and the jail. And so I'm already part of this community and I've actually attended um, a lot of the other meetings you guys have had over the years. And um, I just always wanted to be part of it. And I just never really had the opportunity. And then I saw the deputy clerk position come open. And so I decided to come forward and try to get that position so I could become part of this community more and come involved. Um, coming through a, a lens of being an attorney, I feel like I can bring that to the to, of accountability and public trust which is really what I'm after and kind of going back to following the ordinances, the, the procedures that we should be following and helping. That's really my goal. And so I'm glad to be here. And I really appreciate you guys picking my uh, resume so that I could come and speak to you guys. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right, Councilman Tucson. 
Can you discuss your understanding of the role and responsibilities of a city clerk in Michigan, particularly as it pertains to local government operations? Um, I didn't see it on the municipal code, but in the actual ordinance for the clerk for the city of Ypsilanti, it actually says that the clerk is at the council's pleasure. And it's meant for, for me to be able to listen to what you're saying, record it accurately, and then present it to the public and to uphold public integrity and trust on your behalf. And then to also, I would think, if something to inform you, if you ask me what, oh, no, what is the ordinance that follows this, that I would do the research to be able to help you guys make the decision that way. Um, obviously, the another big component is the election. And um, this election, I had my first election with Andrew, and um, there was training pr provided that I took. I got accredited in the first two weeks I worked here so that I would be prepared for that election. And then um, I participated. Also, I'm not sure if you realize that we had hired the um, an ex-clerk from this township that came and trained and was with us during that time and trained me in the office on how to do the elections and things. And uh, we had a Washtenaw County um, clerks uh, meeting, and uh, they were talking about how well and smoothly everything went. They named three cities specifically that went over and above. Andrew and I were named specifically, um, especially for showing up at the absentee ballot. I mean, that's absentee of the early voting and overseeing that for public and tr trust and integrity again. And so um, that would be part of it, obviously. Um, community outreach, being here, being here for um, the residents come in. They have a wide variety of needs and confusion and directing. I, you know, we're directing them to the police department. We're directing how to buy permits, how to go upstairs. Where are the resources? And so that's kind of like all the parts of it. Let me see. Um, and of course, obviously being at the needs of council, I think I said that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. This is going to seem a little redundant given what you've just told us, but what experience do you have with managing municipal elections, including voter registration, the qualified voter file, and election day administration? Sorry, okay. Um, missed all, anything. all right. Um, our qualify our QVF is our our software that we use. It's actually attached to the Secretary of State, so it's our real things of everybody that is in the state. And so I did train on that. Also, Andrew did some training with me for that too. Um, I did that's what I did. The it's a twelve hour um, course to get accredited, and I did it within the first two weeks I worked here. Plus, I've done another 20 hours of training to be able to meet those needs of when people come in and doing the ballots and have that, that kind of experience. The actual um, election uh, process before, as I said, I had one-on-one -on -one training with um, uh, the clerk from the township that came in, plus Andrew. And then um, the day of the election, I really only was able to shadow because there was so much uh, work that happened. And... Um, it's kind of like you don't see it because it's mostly behind the scenes, but Andrew actually did a really exceptional job. And um, I feel like I could really learn a lot from him. And if the next election, well, we actually have one. Um, again, he's helping me um, work through that. And um, I think that I'm continuing to build those skills. All right, thank you. Thank How you. do you ensure that full access to the ballots is assured and promoted for all residents? Can you ask me that again? I'm not sure I understand your question. So how do you ensure that full access to ballots is assured and promoted for all residents? They're automatically sent out the absentee ballots. So all the residents are receiving that. Um, on it is the clerk's office and the phone number. So they are calling us asking what's their options, where's their polling locations when they come in. We do look in the QVF and look it up for them and tell them their polling locations or print their ID cards so that they can go, even though really they don't need them, but a lot of people think that way. Um, we're also updating the um, city website as needed so that everybody is aware of what's happening as it's happening because there's a lot of changing laws and we're trying to meet that those needs that way. We're also working with our communication manager here that does the uh, Facebook and Twitter. And so he's also sending out those kinds. I can't say I've actually ever looked at them because uh, it's his job and I haven't had that time, but that is how we're also doing it. Thank you. Thank you. 
How familiar are you with Michigan laws and regulations that impact municipal operations, uh, FOIA, OMA, election law, uh, et cetera? Okay. Well, I'm very familiar with FOIA, um, but we actually um, send our FOIA request to the city attorney, and then we just fulfill the request as opposed to doing the quest. But if we needed to, if we wanted to do it in-house, I would be capable of doing it. I've been trained in FOIA, so that wouldn't be a problem. Uh, what was the second one you asked? Um, Open Meetings Act, election laws. Okay. So, um, so um, I'm familiar with Open Meetings Act, and I did um, go and research it, print it out, read it, and so that I would be up to date on it. And then I have gone back to Andrew as I've asked questions like about is Zoom required and is it required from all the commissioners and things like that, trying to get when we have problems with quorum and trying to figure out those solutions. And um, and the same, I think I already answered about the election. Thank you. Thank you. Hi. Hi. Um, Please speak about your development as a municipal clerk and how this position with the city of Ypsilanti fits your career development. Where do you see yourself and career in five years? Is this position a way station for you or is it attractive for a longer term? Great question. I really appreciate you asking that. Um, I'm I'm in it. I'm in it to win it. I'm here for the city. I've I've actually been here for the city when I wasn't deployed. I worked locally as a substitute teacher. I've worked at all the local schools. Um, I worked mostly at Perry as a lead preschool teacher. And um, even though I've got paid not quite half, but of substantially less to be a substitute teacher in the city of Ypsilanti than it is to be in Ann Arbor. Um, but I, I called a passion. This is my community. These are my people. And I'm, I'm going to be here. And so regardless of the decision tonight, I hope to continue to contribute and um, bring accountability, transparency, trust, understanding, compassion, and uh, to be here. Thank you. I'll be here in five years. <laughs> Hello, good evening. Uh, how do you ensure accuracy and attention to detail in your work, especially when dealing with sensitive information? I think obviously with uh, being trained as an attorney and for the federal government, I'm definitely familiar with especially confidential information. Um, I'm a level five in um, as a background check for being, um, let's see what the theme of it, examination for national safety. Uh, so I'm already aware of how to keep things confidential. Um, what was the other half of your question, the first part? Sorry. Uh, ensure accuracy and attention to detail. Um, I think obviously looking back on, you know, writing something, maybe looking back on it, having other peer review. Um, my resume has an error in spelling. Um, the team in the clerk's office brought it to my attention after it was too late. And I said, well, I hope you realize I'm human. I do make mistakes, but I would like to fix those mistakes if they're brought to my attention and take responsibility. And uh, But I would aim for mistakes to be minimal. <laughs> Good evening. Evening. How would you approach maintaining confidentiality and discretion in your role as city clerk? Ask the question more because it seems so similar. I'm just kind of seeing the. How would you approach maintaining confidentiality and discretion in your role as city clerk? Um, I would assume, as I do now, that everything that I see is confidential. The residents are confidential. The the staff issues or anything that's going on is confidential. If I have something that needs to be discussed, I can take it to my city manager, as, as I've already been doing. Um, and realizing, again, we're trying to uh, uphold um, public trust. And, you, you know, if someone can trust you to keep their information confidential, they're not going to be trusting you in general. And so that's very important to me and having a high level of personal integrity. Thank you. Thank you. Can you describe your experience with conducting public meetings or hearings? Well, I was trained as an attorney and um, 
also through that job working for the federal government, I would train and give, um, um, it was, I mean, it was staff group things. It wasn't to the public, but um, so I have that, those kind of uh, abilities. Um, also starting next week at the, uh, what's called Michigan Associate of Municipal Clerks. They have a three-year program and um, I start next week. I'll be doing my first 40 hours of clerk training to get th three years later, you get um, accredited, like a different kind of accreditation. And so I'm constantly trying to um, improve my skills. Thank you. Thank you. Can you provide an example of a successful project or initiative you led from conception to implementation? What were the key factors contributing to its success? Um, yeah, I'm actually really um, proud of um, deciding to post for Black History Month that we had the resolution and um, I went and contacted the uh, communications manager and asked, you know, how can we start uh, putting this on the, the um, city website? I wanted to um, have each person. Um, I realized that the Black History Month was had a different um, group. It was supposed to be, I think, uh, artists maybe, uh, but, I, but I realized that nothing had been done like that before. So I wanted to lay a foundation for years to come. And the foundation was more of a historical overlook. So I tried to post pictures of the community, Perry School, people that have gone to school here, people that used to live here, people that um, um, Andrew actually gave me the direction that it would be local Ypsilanti history. And um, I got a lot of support from um, everyone that read it. And uh, the only thing I think was an issue that I had to challenge people was that the city website normally only has that mailbox um, picture. And I wanted the picture of the person to be on it. And that had never been messed with. And so I did get some um, challenge there, but it ended up being resolved and came up. And I think it looked really great. And now we have a landing spot on our city website. And then I went back and in, if you look at the city website, it says, if you visit, it says local history. I actually had it added and asked to have it added so that local history is black African-American history also. And so I'm really proud of that. Thank you. All right. And finally, communication and collaboration are essential in the role of city clerk. Can you provide examples of how you effectively communicate with city officials, staff, and the public to fulfill the duties of the position? Second part of the question, discuss your thoughts on how to manage, supervise, and motiv motivate people who work for you. Okay. Um, I think that it, the, the clerk position, it has to have um, a level of professional of an integrity and um, continuity. And so um, my goal has been so far to respond in a professional manner. And um, even if it's uh, friendly, it's it's professional, can be expected, continuous, stable, and that they know they're going to the next person that contacts me is going to get the same answer as far as you're wanting to get a license or if you're wanting to get a permit, whatever your needs is, that this is the requirements and it's given to them in a professional standard way for each person. Can you ask me the rest of that question one more time? Um, discuss your thoughts on how to manage, supervise, and motivate people who work for you. Yeah. And so um, in the clerk's office right now, it's been, um, we're a team. We have really been really proud of the efforts that we've made as a team, especially with the election. We had a lot of people coming in to get their absentee ballots and um, figuring out how, how that's going to work together up there. Um, we are one person short in the in the clerk's office. Um, Andrew has gone on over and above to meet all of those needs. We're trying to shore him up and you know fulfill the needs there. And I think it was collaborative and a teamwork. I don't I, and um, praise. And acknowledgement. Uh, um, Vicki, who works in the clerk's office, she um, trained like two or three people. She's been helping me when I say how the questions. I went to HR, let them know that, you know that she's been doing good work and she ended up being acknowledged for that. And I think those small things contribute to staff morale, that they're filled, valued and appreciated because we're all in it together. And an open door. I want win-win situations for all of us.
So we have gone through our formal questions. Do you have any questions for us? Um, do I have any questions? Let me, I want to see. I, I did want to speak just so that one more thing was about the, as far as the uh, Robert Rules of Order. Sure. So I had gone back and started reading the agendas from like 2018 in minutes to see what has happened, like what has been going on here. And I saw that it had got brought in by the mayor. And so I did start reading that book and it is dense reading. And so I did reach out to the city attorney, the parliamentarian and ask him, is there training available? Is there more things that we could all be given automatically that we would maybe a video or who, I don't know what. And so he actually did get back with me and give me some more resources to be able to share with other commissioners or you, if you guys are interested. I think last, last council member meeting, you guys mentioned that you wanted some more. And so I did get that. And um, and so I just wanted to, to, to say that I'm wanting to help you know, I'm wanting to, to do that. Um, I think that was it. I know you asked me if I had questions and I really can't, my main is just like. All right, well then thank you so much for coming in to interview with us. Oh, yeah. We get chances to do follow-ups on any of these? Oh, so we've usually not, because then you have to ask the same question to the next person. You, would have, to. you have to ask the same question to the other candidate. But it's less of a specific to one of no, it's specific to one of these oh, questions. Okay. So, um, in question number two, um, I, I, I'm anyway. Mm -hmm. uh, was just part of the question was about including voter uh, registration. Yeah, you got it. I don't know what you. <laughs> When we did this for the for the city manager positions, we had if there was something that we didn't feel like we got the answer for, mm -hmm. we were able to ask a oh, follow-up. Yeah, you can do that. We were saying okay. no new questions. No, no, ask not new questions. Yeah. I want to ask one for all. Yeah. So, uh, and the second question: What experience do you have with managing municipal elections, including voter registrations and qualified voter file, and election day administration? You you. Uh, touched everything except for the the voter registration great thank you for bringing that back to my attention i appreciate that um so we already um with qvf we're notified like when you go down to secretary of state and you sign up the law used to be that when you you could elect to become a voter well now they automatically make you a voter and you have to elect out and so when that happens, they automatically send us notifications and we send, I have been sending the, um, their voter registration cards. And so also if someone came in or mailed in their, their um, application, like maybe they got it off the internet, maybe they got it from Washtenaw County, they would send it to us and then we process it through QVF. Most of the time it actually is already there, but that's an ongoing thing that we do weekly. It's already been happening weekly. Thank you. Thank you. So I have a question to be added for our, all candidates because I'm just looking at the competency areas and realizing that we don't have a question. There's a couple of areas that we miss, but one in particular is around budget responsibilities. Um, uh, and that the, so the clerk is a part of, of that team. So I'm just wondering about your experience um, working with budgets, um, on a larger scale. Yeah, in, in this this position, I haven't been asked to do that. Well, I take that back. I was sent the, sent the information about the budget, uh, I believe like the first week or two I was here. And I did speak to Andrew about the budget and gave my thoughts about, about it. But um, in this position, I haven't worked with the budget. Um, in my, um, I've done land development, which is a lot of budgeting for all the different contractors, um, permits, licensing, and th that kind of thing. But um, as far as at the city, I haven't done it here yet. Any, I mean, any previous experiences not to just be with the city, um, but just in terms of like, um, you know, like how comfortable you are doing that kind of work or any- Yeah, any yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I enjoy detail 
And so I enjoy um, figuring out solutions. I especially like math because the answer is always what it is as opposed to other things that can be gray. And um, so I would welcome the opportunity to work on those kind of issues um, and work on the budget. I haven't had an opportunity here. Like I said, I've done it in private sector, but I've never done it in government sector. And so I'm not sure um, exactly um, how that would work differently, um, but I am willing to learn. If you have any questions now, you can ask them since you have a second opportunity. You don't have to. Well, then, with that, thank you so much. For I really appreciate the opportunity, guys, each thank one of you. you. I've been watching you guys, and I appreciate it. Thank you. Council, there is 15 minutes until the next interview starts. If perhaps maybe do the resolution. Just get it out of the way. Oh, okay. Uh, sure. Do we have to do anything special to move it? It was just the motion would be to replace resolution 402840. Yeah, so I'm like, can you, can you, you give it out? Yeah, I, did, I, did, I did. That would be you. Um, you want to make a motion to replace? A move to replace resolution number 2024-041 with... Okay, <laughs> with, with a resolution to approve the sale of pedestrian easement at 130 North um, here on Street, it is resolved by the Council of the City of Ypsilanti that whereas the city acquired a pedestrian easement over the private property at 130 North Huron in 1984 to access to Riverside Park, and the easement was never developed, and whereas the city acquired title and land access to Riverside Park from North Huron Street adjacent to the Riverside Arts Center, including a plaza and steps and walkway to Riverside Park, and no longer has need for the 130 North Huron easement, and whereas William Douglas Winters, the present owner of 130 North Huron, has offered to purchase the easement back from the city for the sum of $15,000, a value established by the city assessor. Now, therefore, Ypsilanti City Council adopts the offer to purchase the easement and approves and authorizes the mayor and acting city clerk to sign and deliver a quick claim deed approved as to form by the city attorney terminating the easement and returning the rights to the property owner upon payment to the city of $15,000. And I so move. Support. Moved and supported. Um, Andrew, can you just explain like kind of what we're doing here? So the um, the previous resolution was to be signed by the mayor and the deputy city clerk. The deputy city clerk reported that there was there was a conflict of interest, and he requested not to be the signatory on it. So that's all it's changing after the signing of the Senate. Councilmember Simmons. Um, well, I just want to say since this came back up that, um, you know, since our meeting, um, I've had no less than five um, different outreaches um, from people, um, both talking about how they use that right of way and um, also being upset that the city would remove public access without community engagement. So I want to name that again, um, that uh, this feels like a kind of backwards process that um, privileges, that doesn't privilege the public. So, um, and that we were you know, the there didn't seem to be consideration for the fact that it was used. We it was continually said that it was not used, and that has been countered. I know it was countered beforehand, and since then, um, I've there's been conversation both on my Facebook thread as well as people who contacted me directly. Um, about this issue. So I just want to put that out there, put it forward. Um, and that I hope that in uh, future situations that we um, are making different considerations based on actual public use of public space. Thank you. Any further comment or discussion? It, oh, because I didn't raise my hand. Uh, just a, a follow up to Councilman Simmons' question. Um, 
how close from there is the nearest access point to the park? If anyone knows. Two blocks. Or less. It's actually a block down from the so block pass. pass. When you're well, going, well, walk, right? okay. well, it depends on, yeah, whether you're coming up from the park, going down to the park. Where you cross the street. Since this did come back, is there a way that we can do public engagement before going forward with the decision tonight? So this has already been passed. If you wanted to do that, you would actually have to rescind that resolution and not approve this. So this is just replacing the, right. the resolution that was approved, but it, the resolution itself still stands. So I can make a motion to rescind? Apparently you can't because there's a motion on the floor. Okay. You could, after this is voted on, you could make a motion. And I don't have that paper. What is the resolution number? 041. Thank you. 2041. I think so. Uh, city manager, you can call the roll, I suppose. Mayor Brown? Councilmember Sweet? Yes. Councilmember Tucson? Yes. Councilmember Simmons? Yes. Councilmember McLean? Yes. Councilmember King? No. Mayor Pro Tem Wilcoxon? Yes. Motion carries with six yes, one no. Thank you. Councilmember King? Oh, I move to rescind. Resolution number 041. I'll support. It's been moved and supported. Discussion? I have a question. Um, this has never been marked as a public access. So people saying that they've used it and it's never been marked. Um, are there other ways that people access the park that aren't marked as well? Uh, don't have signage. I don't. Yeah, I don't know if there is. I mean, maybe other people just knew better. I mean, I like I've said, um, the way it looks, it does look like, oh, you it wide enough. You look like you want to use it. Um, the only reason that I personally haven't is because I'm extra diligent as a black person to not be in spaces that I think people will call the police on me for. That's literally the only reason I never actually used it. It does look really attractive. It's more direct. Um, and so if there had even been a sign to say this is a public space, I definitely would have used it, especially when I was pushing my daughter in a stroller instead of going up the stairs on Riverside, which are usually um, in pretty poor maintenance. And so that was a struggle, <laughs> but I would have used that space. Um, and so there's some people who I think either knew it or just were attracted enough to it and used it. So, um, yeah, it's not marked, but I think people either just go around or use the stairs. Um, one person who contacted me said that one of their concerns is that there are often people who hang out by the stairs, and so they like to use it as a, a different way up, so they're not kind of um, uh, disturbing the hangout or that they feel more safe themselves. So I have not felt unsafe by the people who hang out by the stairs, but um, but that was one that was one that was one thing that somebody did say was that they used it as an alternative route for that reason. Okay. And being that we did hear from some community members, and because it is a public space, you know, before we approve the resolution, I would like to give the public opportunity to have a say. Further discussion comment? Yes, what, what are the implications? Uh, so there's already a fence there, right? Uh, this gets really complicated because you know, then do we have to go through legal proceedings to get them to remove the fence? Um, if the access isn't through that part, is there any other point along that corridor that you can get through? That's directly opposite Washington, right? Mm -hmm. And I've I've used that many times, but I thought I was just cutting through. I never knew that there was actually that the city owned it. I was just cutting through. Mm -hmm. uh, did it on bikes? Did it on foot? Um, especially when there were festivals and things like that. Mm -hmm. So you know, I can appreciate that people looked at that 
spot and went, yep, that's a good way to get out of here. Um, mm -hmm. I think that was, I have a follow up to that, but. Um, so the question being, you know, now that there's a fence there, I, I really have issue with how that property was sold and that person didn't know the easement was there. Um, so that's, should have been covered in any title transfer of that property. And that person should have known that there was an easement there. Um, so I'm not heavily worried about what that person you know, there's there's a there's a there's an outlay, you know, a capital outlay on on that person's part, but they should have known it was there. They have the title of the thing. They bought the property. The easement was there. Um, that should have been in the transfer. So, um, you assuming that the person didn't know? Well, <laughs> because... I don't know. I'm not assuming anything. I'm not gonna make any assumptions about that. But I, the only assumption I would make is they should have known because there was a there was a transfer of that property and that should have been mm -hmm. in uh, that easement should have been revealed in that in that transfer. And it was my understanding that it said sell it back. So it sounded like it may have been his prior. Now I don't know, but I, I'm not, I'm saying before, but I don't have that information in front of me to say yes or no. I don't know if that's what that means. <clears throat> So just to kind of speak to that point about knowledge, it feels really hard to me um, because, you know, people who are used to reading legal documents, um, I think actually have a, a high, there's a high, a higher expectation for some of those things. Um, and as I've stated, you know, and I, I'm actually still surprised um because I also think about like who put up that fence, um, because even if it was unclear that the city, there was a city easement, then the neighboring, whoever the neighbor is, would have needed to be contacted and informed and would have needed to sign a notarized note that um, would have needed to be secured ahead of time. Um, because I've, like, like I said, I went through this process and was told that this was what was required and that the fencing company actually helped to make sure that it happened so that they would not be found at fault for putting a fence between the two properties. So, um, anyway, it raises a lot of questions to me, given the circ, both the circ given the circumstances overall, but given that process, um, because there was no neighbor to get a note from. And I that just is a big question mark to me. Um, and even the concern about needing to put up a fence in order to secure their private property, the fence could have still been put up eight feet over. <laughs> or whatever, or wherever it's, however it's sitting, um, the fence did not actually need to go on the right of way in order to secure that property um, in that way. And so what it feels like is that um, someone took property and now is making a claim that it's theirs and we are saying, okay, that's fine after the fact. Um, and um, and again, that I, I think that in terms of our overall process, when thinking about removing public space and public access, it does seem that it should involve more than one landowner's voice. I have a question. So if, um, if we rescind and open it back up for the public to give comment, how, how, how would that even work? Or is there going to be like just opportunity for folks to send emails, call? Is it? Yeah. I mean, I guess that's what I, I I'm looking at you. I don't, I didn't mean maybe to you. I'm asking like, how would, how do we want to go about, or how would we go about soliciting the extra feedback? Now, what, um, I just like to notice the time. I, um, and we have, we have somebody who's waiting to do this. Is it possible within Robert's rules to to postpone the vote on this or it's on the table doesn't say later 
I guess if we get the answer to the question, that'd be great. Yeah, we can ask your question. question. I'm asking those who want who mm -hmm. offered it up. What what? How do you want us? How would you foresee the comment coming? It sounds like a long conversation, right? So I, I would move to table this until uh, after the next meeting. I'll support that. Mm -hmm. I'm really interested in giving that conversation the time it, it deserves. And you said after the interview. Yeah. Okay. Great. Let's go back to where it was on the agenda after the other discussion. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. Please call the roll. Sorry. Councilmember Sweet? Yes. Councilmember Simmons? Yes. Councilmember McLean? Yes. Councilmember King? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Wilcoxon? Yes. Mayor Brown? Yes. <clears throat> Councilmember Sweet. Dave. Yeah, you call. Yeah, you're already at, yeah. <laughs> Councilmember Tucson. Yeah. <laughs> Other guy. <laughs> All right. Right on schedule. We're right. Six forty-five. I'm assuming you're Tracy Boudreaux. Is that how you say it? All right. Welcome. Please come forward. Um, no problem. Nice to see you as well. Good evening. Um, hopefully this will be painless this experience um what we'll do is the council will go around kind of round robin ask you questions um at the end we'll allow you to tell us anything else that you feel like you need us to know or ask any questions you have for us um and we'll start with maybe one minute of an introduction overall of your, to us okay um hi my name is tracy boudreau uh, i am currently the deputy city clerk in the city of dearborn um we have a population of about 100,000. We have about 75,000 registered voters. So it is a large city. Um, we spent 21 days working in a row doing early voting on our own. I know your community um, worked with the county, so you didn't have to take care of that all on your own. Um, so we've been really busy. I, it's um, a large community. Um, I love what I do there. I love working for the clerk's office. I think it is an integral part um, of the municipal process. Uh, I take pride in what we do. I take pride in being responsible for elections and being the keeper of the records. Um, but I'm looking for a bit of a smaller community. Um, and so that's why I'm here with you guys today. Thank you so much. Councilman Tucson, take it away. Can you discuss your understanding of the role and responsibilities of a city clerk in Michigan, particularly as it pertains to local government operations? Sure. Um, city clerks are generally responsible for a lot of, uh, I like to say that we are the Google um, of the municipality uh, and anything that doesn't fall somewhere eventually falls to the clerk. But I know that there are specific responsibilities. Um, as I kind of said in my introduction, we are the keeper of the records. I am very familiar with the um, document retention laws for the state of Michigan um, and adhere to them and use them as guidelines, as well as um, it's, it also becomes the council's decision. You know, if there's something that isn't required to be kept by law, maybe you still want to keep it and you find value in it. Um, I'm very much interested in the archiving of permanent records for that documentation and that historical significance. Uh, in the city where I currently work, we had a warehouse full of documents, and I've spent the past four years trying to organize and go through those documents. And man, archival storage is really expensive. But if we could archive everything, I think that would be the best way to go um, so that you can have all of those records. But okay. I think that's one of the most important things is document retention, being aware of all of the laws related to that, and ensuring that all of the council proceedings which the clerk is completely responsible for, um, that everything is published correctly, that everything is done in a timely manner, recorded the way it should be, uh, and the information disseminated to the public as it should be um, by law, but also for transparency and so that the residents are aware of what's going on in the city. I think a big part of what, well, what the clerk does in general is educating the public too, particularly about voting. <laughs> um, people have no idea how municipalities work and particularly how elections work. And so that's part of what I think a clerk needs to do. Um, election law is incredibly important and must be followed to the letter. 
and it can be difficult sometimes. It's nice to have other clerks and associations and groups that you can bounce things off of um, and getting ideas to ensure that we are following all of the laws, even sometimes before the state has got those laws written. That's kind of the hard part. That's one of the things we ran into with early voting is Prop 2 had passed. And so we were ready to go with early voting, but the laws had not been created yet. So we were starting to plan and implement without knowing what the laws were going to be and then had to pivot. And that's something that goes on in the clerk's office as well. That's what we have to do is pivot. Um, when something changes, you just have to get on board with it and move with the changes and ensure that you're adhering to the laws. Um, I think that's kind of a good overview. Uh, if you had any other specific questions. That's it, thank you. What experience do you have with managing municipal elections? You've already touched on that, but uh, to ask the question the way it's written, uh, including voter registration, the qualified voter file, and election day administration. I have been in charge of all of those for um, at least the past four years. Um, working in the clerk's office before that, I did some of the tasks as well, uh, but I do have an election supervisor. Um, so the day-to-day -day managing of the QVF file is done by that person. So I don't do it daily, but I'm absolutely a part of all of it. Um, have been QVF certified, manage um, the inbox. You know, we have to update the records as people move, as they pass away, uh, as their name changes. So, and we currently by law are still required to keep actual cards, physical voter cards. Um, I think all of the clerks are hoping that soon they will let it just be the electronic record, but currently um, we do have to keep those. And there are, again, the laws about retaining uh, them for a certain amount of time. Um, I have managed the elections, every aspect of it, uh, from setup and delivery, uh, from preparing the ballots, uh, ballot wording for local proposals to go on the ballot, I proofed the ballots. We um, initiated a second language ballot. So I also oversee the translation of all of our ballots into Arabic. Um, I do not speak Arabic, so I cannot do the translation, but I manage the entire process with the language access committee. So we very detailed, very involved. We, um, where I work currently, we use Dominion as our election equipment. I know that you guys use heart. Um, so that would be a little bit of a difference for me. Uh, I'm very good with the equipment. Um, I troubleshoot. I go out and deal with the problems and the jams and any issues. Uh, the good part is the electronic poll book. The laptops are the same. Um, so that wouldn't be a difference for me. And I program those and load those with the programs as well. Um, and then upload the results and all of the uh, voter information that goes in after the election as well. Uh, so I think I know a lot about elections. I have a passion for elections. I think the election process is, you know, one of the most basic rights and responsibilities for citizens. And I always want to ensure that everybody has that opportunity and ability and that they understand the process because a lot of the misinformation comes from not really understanding the way it works. So I also started a voter outreach program, hoping to educate voters more. Um, I love the idea of voter registration drives. I know you have a college in your town. I don't know if you currently do that, um, but I think that's a wonderful way to get information out, getting the students registered. Uh, I'd also, you know, we've also gone to high schools. Um, we work with the League of Women Voters and we register, you know, the youth that way. The state keeps lowering the age that we are allowed to register people before they get to 18. So it just gives us more and more um, groups that we can uh, get the word out. Thank you. Thank you. How do you ensure that full access to the ballots is assured and promoted for all residents? Um, so I actually, because we added this language access program, um, I we had actually been asked to meet with Senator Peter's people because they're working on language access for everyone. Um, I don't know financially if that's going to be possible, but I'm definitely an advocate of that. As long as the state takes on the responsibility 
for funding. <laughs> we, you know, we did it. We went through it. It is so expensive and it is so easy to make a mistake. Um, and you want it to be, well, the law is ballots must be the same for everyone. So we want to ensure that the translation is accurate. And if it's all at the state level, doesn't fall down to the municipal clerks. Um, and then that would give more opportunity because the municipalities can't afford all of that themselves. The state has to take on that burden. Um, and I, I think we as clerks need to advocate for that because that's the best way that we are going to have access for everyone. I definitely believe in accessibility for all voters. There should be a handicap accessible terminal available for absentee voters. Uh, when they're you know, coming into the city to vote, they should have access to um, a handicap accessible terminal as well, where they could utilize that if they had any needs or restrictions you know, that might cause them issue. Um, and we, the state is allowing and making laws to allow more and more access for people. So I, I think that's helping, but it is obviously of utmost importance. Thank you. Uh, you touched on some of these already that I'm about to ask, but um, how familiar are you with elect or Michigan laws and regulations that impact municipal operations, FOIA, Open Meetings Act, election laws, et cetera? Um, we do FOIAs. Uh, we have a legal department that has the FOIA coordinator. So I am not the FOIA coordinator, but I do fill FOIA requests. Um, so I am pretty familiar with the laws. Um, and that's one of the reasons that as the keeper of the records, we have to do a good job so we can always have them accessible to anybody who requests them. Um, what was that list again? There was uh, Open Meetings Act and then General Election Laws. Open Meetings Act. That was mm -hmm. the one I was going mm -hmm. to talk about. Um, absolutely. I think that it's important that the clerk have a good working knowledge of that, as well as Robert's Rules of Order, as well as your council rules of order, as well as your city charter. Um, that's how I always say the clerk is governed by laws. We don't make anything up. We do everything because of some law somewhere. So we have to know the ones that apply to us as well as the entire municipality. So I'm um, Robert's Rules of Order. I'm very familiar with um, the Open Meetings Act. I have read through and through. I couldn't quote it, but <laughs> find something. Thank you. Good evening. Um, please speak about your development as a municipal clerk and how this position with the city of Ypsilanti fits your career development. And where do you see yourself and career in five years? Is this position a way station for you or is it attractive for a long term? So I very much feel that this is attractive for me long term. Um, I've worked in the clerk's office for a long time. I have been the deputy for quite a few years now. Um, and I love the job. I've lived in the same city my whole life, and it's a little too crowded for me. Um, and so I'm I'm looking to the second half of that career. Um, my husband wants bees and chickens, so we definitely need to get out of our city. And this is this is the area and the direction that we've been drawn to. Um, so. In five years, I would see myself happily ensconced as your city clerk, um, knowing, having taken all of that time to learn the ins and outs here, uh, because I feel like you need to learn every day. And, you know, if you're not learning, you're dying. And I won't know a lot when I come in. I, I have the framework because I've done this before, but the specifics here are different. And I, I would very much believe that in five years, you know, I, I hate to say I'd be the expert, but that's, I feel like I would be the expert. I would know all of your rules and regulations and the way the municipality runs. And I could be that um, reference for anyone that was looking for that information. And which I think is a big part of what the clerk does. Thank you. <clears throat> Good evening. Um, so how do you ensure accuracy and attention to detail in your work, especially when dealing with sensitive information? Um, I think those are two of my strengths, our attention to detail. 
um, which kind of leads to accuracy. I, you know, you have to pay attention to the details. I, I don't write the minutes, but I currently proof the minutes and it's looking at the details. It's keeping yourself organized and following the same policy and procedure all the time. When you start changing things, I mean, yes, we need to change sometimes too. And if procedurally you need to, then that's good, but you need to follow the same procedures all the time so that you ensure you are getting the same results. And you need to have your procedures well outlined so that everyone can follow them. And it's always good to have a second eye or a third eye looking at something. How, good evening. Evening. How would you approach maintaining confidentiality and discretion in your role as city clerk? Um, I also believe that is very important. I know that um, council holds closed meetings um, and it's often, you know, pertaining to sensitive information. Um, so the important thing is always remembering that there's a time and a place that you can talk about things and knowing the limits of the sensitive information, you know, who it can be released to or who you can discuss it with. And then, you know, ensuring that you keep a locked drawer um, to maintain those locked files. Thank you. Okay. Can you describe your experience with conducting public meetings or hearings? Of course. Um, so I am currently the backup to the clerk. So I do not usually attend the council meetings unless he's absent. Um, but then I do. Uh, I have no problem with public speaking. I have no problem with volume. Um, so I can easily conduct a meeting um, and help direct those that are running the meeting. Um, I am currently the secretary for our charter commission in November of 21, we elected a nine person charter commission and um, they appointed me as their secretary. So I have been managing their meetings, taking all of their minutes, um, as well as revising and revamping the charter and doing a red line version and a clean version. Um, and then we have so many commissions in the city that there are not any others that we run, but we do manage all of the commissions. So we manage, of course, all of the oaths. We keep all of those, the timeline, letting the council know when someone is up for renewal, um, as well as, you know, keeping track of all of their minutes and their proceedings. We don't record their minutes. Someone from the commission does, and then they give them to us. But we manage all. Thank you. Can you provide an example of a successful project or initiative you led from conception to implementation? What were the key factors contributing to its success? Um, I think one of the biggest things that I undertook was um, changing over our absentee voting process. We used um, just a regular tabulator. And um, when Secretary of State Benson during 2020 sent out the absentee applications, to everyone, we went from 5,000 absentee ballots that we would process to 25 to 30,000. And we were completely overwhelmed in that election. It kicked our butt. Um, we were there till the next day. And I knew that we could not continue that way, that our, our numbers had changed and that was not gonna go back and we needed to figure something else out. So I worked with our um, election equipment provider and they have high-speed tabulators. So we purchased the high-speed tabulators, but it was more than just that. It was our entire process from start to finish. Um, we had been in a more lackadaisical, laid back format, and there was no way that would work with the new process and the continuing changing laws. So we had to implement a very specific process to ensure that we made no mistakes, 
and we missed no ballots. You know, we didn't miss pulling out dead person's ballot, um, that we were curing all of the signatures. And so we created this entirely new process. We did work um, with a couple of other communities that had done something similar, but on a much smaller scale. So we had to, you know, revamp it and make it ours, how it would work for us. Um, it, it meant creating new manuals, all new procedures, new processes. We needed not only new equipment, but new support equipment to make all of that happen. And it probably took us two elections to really get it where it was working efficiently. And, and now it's a beautiful process. Uh, we can process 25,000 ballots in one day without any errors. And that's the biggest thing to me, no errors. Um, and we are continually, you know, tweaking it and improving it. And in fact, we're already revamping it again because the state has changed the law and we can now pre-process, um, you know, to almost a week ahead. So it's continually evolving. <clears throat> Okay. Uh, communication and collaboration are essential in the role of city clerk. Can you provide examples of how you effectively communicate with city officials, staff, and the public to fulfill the duties of the position? Discuss your thoughts on how to manage, supervise, and motivate people who work for you. Okay. That's several things. Yes. Communication and then people I work with. Um, I think I'm a very good communicator. Uh, I'm a people person and I love to work with the public. And I, I, I have to tell you, I love your form of government that your mayor is part of your council because the clerk feels right in the middle when you're not. Um, and that's a very difficult place for the clerk to be. So I think this is an amazing form of government. Uh, and I'm very hopeful that that makes for you know, more cooperation and communication, because uh, that's that's often one of the hardships. Um, but I am very much a collaborative person. I want nothing more than for the greater good to be fulfilled. And it takes everyone participating together. Um, you know, if it's not my favorite idea, it's a little bit more difficult for me to get on board, but I will nonetheless get on board um, if that is what, you know, the council wants to do, then I am definitely behind it. I will um, usually express my opinion, um, hopefully when asked, but sometimes if I feel strongly about things, um, again, because I think it's for the greater good, uh, I will express that opinion. Um, and I just hope that it's never taken, you know, uh, in a disrespectful way, because that's never my intention. I'm always looking for the greater good and hoping that everything is a collaboration. Mm -hmm. um, and in terms of the public, it's our job to serve the public. That's what we are here for. Uh, I have no greater joy than when I can help a customer, when somebody walks into City Hall and has no idea why they're here or what they really need, um, or is lost and has been trying for weeks to figure out what they need. And then if I'm able to help them, that's the greatest satisfaction to me because that's what it's all about. We're here to help our residents. Um, working with others. Uh, I think I'm a good team member. I don't think you can be a good leader unless you know how to be a good team member. I think it's really important um, that you uplift and empower your staff. Training, I think, is a big part of that. Uh, I'm, I'm a good trainer. I've been told um, that I'm good at training. Uh, and I think that helps because if you give people the confidence and then they know their stuff, they're only going to do a better job. And it also, I think, creates loyalty. Uh, and I think that's really important, too. I think you have to support your team, be there for them, and then you'll get the same back from them. Thank you. And then Councilmember Simmons, you have the last question. Yes, thank you. Um, hold on, let me just get back to the sink. 
So this is a question about budget responsibilities. Um, and so uh, do you have experience working on budgets on a larger scale um, as that's part of the clerk's role here? Um, so the clerk's budget um, in my municipality is the smallest part of the budget and it's uh, just gotten to about a million dollars. Mm -hmm. um, so that is predominantly the budget that I have worked on. I have not worked on other departments' budgets, but I do work on our budget. Yes. It's a headache, <laughs> but I absolutely do. Um, I'm very frugal. You know, we reuse everything we possibly can. And if there's a grant out there, that's what we're going to go for. Um, so I do have experience. Um, and just in the financial aspect, um, I've worked on budgeting, but I also do payroll and I also do all of our accounts payable. So I pay all of our bills, um, deal with a lot of the contracts for the city for different things that we deal with. Um, so yes, I have worked on budgeting. Thank you. So that was our final question. Unless anybody needs to follow up on any of the questions that were asked. Okay. So do you have any questions for us or anything you would like to share? Um, well, I didn't see it in the job description, but I was reading your charter um, and the clerk needs to live in the city of Ypsilanti? No, <laughs> no. Okay. That really um, was my major question. <laughs> okay. Um, all right. So if there's nothing else, well, thank you so much for coming in an interview with us. Thank you so much. It was great to meet all of you. Nice to meet you as well. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, okay. Gotcha. All right. Perfect. So now we have, um, everybody has their sheets and remember we're going to, you know, fill them out and send your scores in to Andrew by Wednesday. Is that what you said? By Wednesday? Today? Not today. Oh, okay. I was like, wait, I need that for my stuff. Okay. <laughs> okay. So you, so we need to, everybody hang on to all your things, please. So you can provide them to HR. <clears throat> we don't want to make you mad out there. We know. Mm -hmm. so. And so can we just send them, like send you the image of them or you need the physical paper to bring? I'll scan it and send me a PDF. Mm -hmm. That's fine too. Okay. Good to know. Thank you very much. All right. Uh, moving on in the agenda. We now have a discussion about candidates. So uh, discuss. <laughs> yeah. So um, I wanted to just bring this forward for us um, because we found ourselves in a situation. We went from 19 candidates to four to two. Um, and so I... Yeah, I just, you know, obviously one of the candidates um, that we lost who had strong qualifications, we lost kind of, you know, just due to council's um, decision or intolerance for a virtual interview. Um, and then obviously we lost the second candidate this morning. Um, so I just wanted to make sure we had a chance to think about whether there was either um, a rescheduling um, for the candidate that we already um, have brought forward or uh, if we wanted to bring forward uh, any other candidate. For the discussion? I actually had some of the same questions, meaning that again, we started with 19 candidates and now we only have two. So I definitely would like a bigger pool of candidates to decide from. Further comments from council? Um, I can comment, yeah. Uh, it is unfortunate that people dropped out of this. I think when we went through this conversation at uh, the previous meeting, um, there were four, there was another person that uh, had been left off at that point. Um, and there was, you know, we were trying to narrow this down to four people and we left somebody off that had been um, 
by folks, uh, some folks uh, equally as um, as qualified as some of the people that we put on the on the list. Um, so there was a fifth person that was that was left off of that. Um, mm -hmm. I don't feel any responsibility to the people that pulled out um, for for why they pulled out. Um, that's a decision that, that they made um, on their own. They're adults, and that's that's up to them. But um, I'm comfortable with the the process we went through, and and I'm not inclined to uh, extend this process any further. Further comments from council? Um, I think I'll just add, yeah, we started with 19, but I think the five that rose to the top were the five that actually we felt met the the criteria and expectations we were looking for. And so um, I am comfortable moving forward with the process that we also completed. Um, I share some of the same sentiments as Mayor Pro Tem. Mm -hmm. um, it's unfortunate that we did lose folks. I don't like that, that happens. I, it doesn't feel good uh, for whatever the reasons may be, but I'm prepared to deliberate and consider and move forward as is. Council Member Clay. Madam Mayor, uh, Council, I, I think I share those sentiments as well, but particularly because we've just heard from two qualified candidates uh, more than anything else. Uh, if if I felt like we hadn't heard from, from people that we may be able to make a decision on, uh, I think I might say, let's reach back. Uh, and look at more, but with with two that I'm <clears throat> without having tallied my scores yet, uh, but I think they're both going to wind up being pretty strong. Thank you, Councilman Sweet. Um, I was actually um, thinking along the same lines. Actually, what was just said with Councilmember McLean's comments that. Um, if we didn't have, I think, some strong candidates to review, then I think that bars more consideration to reopen the position and look at that process. But um, I feel like we, after conducting the interviews today, have um, candidates that we're able to choose from that I think would do well uh, in the role. Any further comments? Councilmember Simmons. Um, something else that I have been thinking about, you know, so I appreciate everybody's comments. I don't like, I don't know, have a very, like a predetermined sense, um, around this, but I do think it's important for us to talk about our, our options when we're trying to make these big choices. Um, but one other thing I, I noted with one of the candidates is actually, that they're running for a clerk position in another municipality. Um, and so that also raises a concern for me. Um, and so I also wanna just kind of bring that forward um, too, because I don't want to be going through this process again um, later this year. Word for that. I would say I agree. I did see a candidate is running. And um, it would be a shame to put somebody in this position and then they go somewhere else in a few months. And I think um, my statement for just opening up the process again to get more candidates is not because the people that fell off were grown and they had to make life decisions to come to an interview or it's just to have a bigger variety of candidates. We only have two candidates and this is a job that is very important. Um, I, I think so. Interesting to hear that. About, um, what you all have shared about another candidate. I don't know who that is, but that's something that we would have to deal with no matter what somebody could come and go at any time. Um, and so I wouldn't, for me, I don't know if that would be a basis for my decision-making, especially because I don't, I don't know who it is. Um, but I think we had a, we started with a pretty big pool um, and many folks didn't, who, who applied didn't even meet the criteria that we were looking for. 
And so I think that no matter what, if even this person that we're person we're talking about were to get a different job i mean whether we open it now or we open it later it's going to be reopened so if that was going to be the case i hate to say it that way but that might be the situation one way or the other i don't i don't really know so i'm you know i'm going to move on that's all right did you hand i thought you had your hand yes yeah. thank you thank you madam mayor um maybe this is a question for the manager but there wouldn't be anything that would preclude us from making an offer uh, to a candidate like that who is running for something conditional on them withdrawing that? You can make that offer. If it's the candidate that I think you're talking about, they uh, tried to withdraw their candidacy, but it was past the withdrawal deadline. Uh -huh. uh, they're not actively campaigning. So. Will that be on a pro but yes, you could also... <laughs> so, in as a part of the contract, say if elected, you would, you know, you would vacate that seat. Hmm. So it's, it's this is on a primary ballot then. Mm -hmm. Yep. Council Member King. And I was just wondering, even with that information, I'm wondering why didn't why wasn't the council told about that information? I mean, because it sounds like nobody else here knows. Is that accurate? I mean, and I can't name the person, but I'm just wondering. If um Andrew, you know, is that is that information that we should get or should not get? Treat every candidate the same. Yeah. So if the candidate then did not bring that information forward, there'd be no reason for me to bring that information forward. Okay. Being what she said, there was no intent to move forward with that. So from my understanding, even when someone is on in election and they try to with, withdraw if that person is voted in it's her seat vacate the seat though you don't have to take the seat okay you could say <laughs> okay if you win wouldn't that be crazy but if you win <laughs> oh. never mind <laughs> so yeah further discussion i'm just oh. mayor Porten? i did know so Oh, okay. To, to that effect. That's good. And I, I knew that that person had not, uh, had gone through that process to try to be removed from the ballot. So can I just say, I'm sorry. Again, so I knew I was going to bring it up or it was going to come out in the discussion time. It just would be nice if, as a council, we are on the same page and when we get this information, we all can know it. Well, I would challenge council then to say, because three of you said you knew and nobody, I didn't know. Right. So you, we could also share it with each other. I just brought it now, right? I just was able to confirm that today. So that's what I'm saying is that's why yeah, I brought yeah, it. No, I, I appreciate that. I'm just saying the same way that we're, I think where I'm, I feel like you're going with this, we also can share information amongst ourselves. So if someone knew you could have, we could share it with each other. So, I mean, we are equally responsible for how we disseminate information to each other. And so anytime I say anything at the council table, I am speaking to myself as well. I have said before I can do better. Again, I just found that information out. I was surprised to hear um, Andrew knew the information. And again, if it's not a part of the process to tell us, I completely understand. So thank you for that clarity. Thank you. Further discussion? Well, if there's no more, I'm going to close the discussion. Please have your forms in to the city manager by Wednesday, including the question answer key sheet. Um, all right. So do we have to make a motion to bring that resolution back to the table? Yep. Uh, Can somebody move? I move to remove resolution number 2024-041. Support. Okay. Do we have to, can it be, it's a roll call? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. So when we ended, um, I had asked a question about how do we plan if this if this gets rescinded to engage the public? What's the process going to look like for this easement discussion? Councilmember King. So again, I am just wondering what is the normal process for a public space before we change that access? What is the normal process? What we're doing right now for that easement, this would be the normal process. It was noticed and then brought to the council table, discussed, voted on to yeah. public comment. 
would be the normal process? Well, no, no. What, what we just did would be the normal process. If you're looking, if you want to have a public hearing, yeah, we, we would have to notice it, and then you'd have council would hold the pub, public hearing, and then vote on, on the resolution. But normally, I think your question, so normally there's no public hearing attached to something like this. Okay, so with that being said, I think that maybe we should do a public hearing. We could do a public hearing. Maybe you can do a public hearing on anything you want to. Oh, fancy. Please don't say it too loud. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, further discussion on resolution 041. I'll I'll just add, I'll just add to that I think that um yeah I would I would be open to bring it to a public hearing um and I also think that kind of like the time and when people are alerted um I think as it was on the agenda um some people might not have known cuz like I said once it was out then I started getting people reaching out to me about it um, so I think, I think even, you know, the public mm -hmm. hearing and the time for folks to contact us, um, primarily I think around usage, since that was used as one of the major reasons, um, to vacate, um, was, um, you know, evidence of non-usage or saying that wasn't used. I think even with the detail of, the reason why they were looking to put up the fence to me shows that there was usage because obviously people were in that space. Um, so, um, yeah. So anyway, just to say, like, I think both the uh, public hearing and then the time for people to respond um, with knowledge of what it is and that they do, um, that we are asking a question about removing public access, um, a public access way, um, I think would, would be great. And hopefully people will reach out to their representatives. So. Thank you for the discussion on, so Mayor Pro Tem. You can finish what you're going to I was going to say on the, on the motion on the table, that was it. <laughs> um, I guess the point being is we we rescind this we we have a public hearing, um, taking it to the to to the end point is like if people didn't know it was there then then you know the, the point was that nobody had developed that you know and I don't know how long it had our easement since the eighties <laughs> yeah and not, nothing had ever been done with it so. To that point, if we're going to rescind this and do this, then we should have a plan to go mm -hmm. forward with this mm -hmm. to the end. Have signage, have mm -hmm. access. Um, I see that if you if you start doing that, um, you know it, it needs to be followed through, and mm -hmm. you know not just and and we need to address the issues that the the adjacent property owner mm -hmm. was was having. Mm -hmm. with, so, um, mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. that's it. Yeah, I was good. I agree with that. And I think, you know, when thinking about like what it looks like to develop that space, I don't know that it's like a huge need for like overly developed, but I do think signage would be important um, uh, in terms of that. So I, uh, yeah, I definitely support that, um, having that longer term plan in that way. I'm I'm trying to follow the some of the same thinking I think that the mayor pro tem is following. If you think through this, and I'm imagining what happens if we do have a few people that come and say, whether it's three people, thirty people that say I do use it or I would use it, and then that leads us to putting signage there, which I assume Mr. Barr, were he here, would tell us carries with it some liability potentially that you don't just put a sign up there if you don't put if it's not adequate passage uh i don't know if it's a hill is the hill property at all does it does it go down a hill yeah it's a slope. subject to erosion is it going to need steps i don't know i mean we're, we're open up a hornet's nest potentially uh, the other point is and and uh mr barr alluded to this that um 
you know, there there will be opposition. There will have to be. This will necessitate uh, court proceedings in terms of determining what to do with that that yeah. that's there um, and doing that. And I'm I'm not saying I'm, I'm shy about that at all, but just putting it out there that 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 is a likely outcome of of mm -hmm. changing that. So there, you know, person put something up. In my opinion should have known that that was not uh, copacetic. Um, and you know there will be a, a court proceeding in some way, shape, or form to to reverse this yeah. if we go forward. So. Okay. That's down the road. Um, so, yeah. Which, which, Madam Mayor, we probably would pay for. Yeah. Yes, we will. So, <laughs> That's you know. So on on the one hand, we've got fifteen thousand dollars. We I mean we should just know this kind of going into the into the process. We've got a. a proposal that would bring 15,000 to us we may go down a path no pun intended that would be would cost us tens of thousands of dollars the net difference to our coffers could be 50 60 70 thousand dollars conceivably back of the envelope math but just thinking through what so I just want everybody to know that's part of the part mm -hmm. of the conversation <clears throat> King. While Mr. Byers is not here, we do have lawyer representation. We can hear from him. And again, I think Mr. Byers did say on Tuesday that the homeowner knew, he thinks he knew that, you know, the fence shouldn't have went up. He said he couldn't speak to, for yeah, sure, what he knew. For sure. He, he would assume that an attorney would have done the due diligence, basically what he was saying. Um, but he didn't know for sure. He couldn't speak to it. And even uh, her, her with Councilman... Uh, Councilman McLean said we could end up in a situation like that. But also, if that fence was put up before the property was deemed his, which we know it was, that can also be an implication for him as well. I think Councilman McLean was talking about just litigation costs overall. No matter who's at fault, we're gonna you, you pay. So <laughs> that's really it. I don't know, Mr. Ojak, if you know anything about this. I know you didn't probably prepare to talk about it. No, uh -oh. <laughs> Other than very brief times, everybody wants to see our about the last one that we put in. So I don't have a history of the property down. Uh, I would guess it probably would end up in a lawsuit. I don't know if they've already told the other There's nothing you can do to stop a lawsuit. So this is a completely right for the suit. Mm -hmm. And so the cost of going forward with it won't be that costly. Okay. Thank you. House Member Simmons? Another question I have is so on the Ooh, on the document that we saw, there was a date for when the offer expires. And so um my other question is kind of how how this would be impacted if we did rescind. Um, and, and, uh, the time at which we would have to then consider, um, you know, going to court. So if the, the quit claim deed has an agreement date and we pass that agreement date, then the amount agreed upon could fluctuate, could go, um, and then the, the individual that is holding the easement until something happens with this, they could just decide to litigate right away mm -hmm. instead mm -hmm. of waiting for a public. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. To decide, and just so to have clarity, so they could decide to litigate to say, well, I already put my fence here, so this should be mine, or what would be the question to say, um, I did yeah, I'm just trying to get a sense of what that. I'm not an attorney, but he was provided um, permits to erect that fence. It did have to go to the HDC. How oh, a an easement wasn't identified by staff, I do not know. But it there there would be things to litigate. So they followed the correct process. Oh, sorry, Mayor Pertin. And so, 
part of part of the the beginning comments about this is that this is public land that that uh, would go into private um, ownership without a hearing, um, and that's not really the case. This is property that that person owns, and through through right and have an easement so the the i think the legal standard is going to be a very different thing and and you know i could i could see this this person making a very strong case that it hadn't been used the, the 15 years and, and that would be a much harder case for us to take up i think um again i'm here but I, i'm just guessing having seen some of the discussion that we had last night about easements and um you know, and some of the things that were going back and forth between a lawyer and our planning commission and architects and things like that, um, about a lawsuit about the easement there. And I, I think that is, you know, I think I, I could see this being uh, problematic for us and and winning the lawsuit anyway. And that's kind of, you know, why I voted against it or voted to to go ahead with the quit claim, but. Um, after witnessing what I saw last night, it was like, it certainly doesn't give me an appetite for having that, that legal battle over property that this person already owns. And then it's just a question of whether we have the easement and, and what we did with it. Mm -hmm. Um, so, um, that gives me pause. Mr. Ojak, I see your hand. I was just going to say, there is a big I haven't been, you know, looked at this for a while, but at least it used to be a, a large difference in adverse possession of public property mm -hmm. and private property. Not adverse possession. Right. Mm -hmm. At one time, I believe you couldn't get adverse possession. Property that may have changed. I just think there may be a difference. I, I would be more, if the issue is being litigated more, just the county would have looked at a lot. Process. Yeah, the process. Um, what do you um just for you said ad when you're saying um it's like when you say adverse. It's it's Fifteen years came up. For example, if two property owners, if one person says this is the property line, they just hooked the fence. After a certain period of time, no matter what the original becomes it property was. By that rule of law, it becomes the person. And adverse means somebody saying to you, this is my property, it's not yours. They have mm -hmm. to actively do that. Mm -hmm. So in this case, I don't think it's an adverse. Uh, well, I, I mean, adverse easement and on, on the part of public property because it's not public property, it's his property. We have the easement. So it's just like, and that was a negotiated thing. So it's like, I don't think there's adverse possession involved in this at all because we had a, a communication that nobody seems to have the contract for, but we can't, I, I don't see how we can prove that, you know, that's our land and we've had it for that amount mm -hmm. of time. If nobody has that contract and, and there's no been no improvements to it to show that we were using it. Mm -hmm. yeah. Put it the other way around. If we have the easement, with a decent claim by having put it the fence and used it for that period of time, we've lost our easement. That's a problem. Gotcha. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. Thank you for, for that clarity. Yeah, thanks. Um, further discussion on the motion. The motion to rescind. All right, seeing none, city manager. Council Member Simmons. Uh, pass. Council Member McLean? Uh, no. Council Member King? <clears throat> yes. Mayor Pro Tem Wilcoxon? Um, no. Mayor Brown? No. Council Member Sweet? No. Council Member Tucson? No. Council Member Simmons? No. Motion carries with one yes, six no. It fails. Yep, that's <laughs> motion fails. It's all good. All right. 
Um, this is our second opportunity for public comment. If there's anyone in the audience who would like to address council, okay. Is there anyone online? If anyone online would like to make comment, please raise your hand now and you'll have three minutes to address council. No hands raised, council. All right, seeing none, the meeting is adjourned. Thank you.